So I just want to open it up to questions that you guys have. Anything that you have about, uh, let me just lead in with my introduction to Twitter. I actually just got back, it was one year ago last night I landed uh, in this little capsule that went up in the Soyuz rocket in June of last year, June 15th I launched and uh, landed on Thanksgiving Day in that little capsule. And, um, you know, the, the whole event of, of launching on the Russian Soyuz rocket, spending six months in space, commanding the space station. If you remember last summer, uh, we had a major failure on board the station, and the space station sh started to shut down. And I thought to myself, you know, there's, there are certain things in life, we, I call them significant emotional events, you know, when you're, and one of those is when you're inside of a spaceship, and it starts to die on you, you know, so, <laughs> so uh, that's a significant emotional event for sure. But we ended up doing uh, free space walks and getting the, the station repaired, and it was really the experience of a lifetime. Uh, and and I, it was, I thought it was like the pinnacle, the most incredible thing I'd ever seen, you know, the, the teamwork that we came together. But I was in for in for the uh, the most incredible experience, which was riding that little capsule back to Earth. And um, I remember, you know, and I'm pretty kind of a larger on the larger side, and so when they actually stuffed us in the thing for launch, I remember the guy that was strapping us in, the Russian uh, technician, who was jumping on my chest to push me down <laughs> into the seat, you know. And I got wedged down in there on the launch pad. I thought, you know, if I have to get out of this thing, I don't know. Like, I guess it depends on the motivation level. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we strapped, to get, uh, strapped in to come home. And, uh, you know, I, I'd studied, you know, re-entry uh, dynamics and everything, what it was going to be like. But I wanted to talk to people that had actually come back in one of these little things and what it was like and what things I could do to prepare for the thing. And so, um, but nothing could compare, uh, could actually prepare me for what I was about to experience. And, uh, and most everybody said, uh, just hang on. And uh, I was like, well, I was already going to do that. But the, uh, and then the experience coming home. But I have to tell one funny, I'm going to squeal on uh, Fyodor since we're not on camera here. <laughs> My commander uh, was of the Soyuz coming back home was Fyodor your chicken. And he was the, actually the commander of the ISS for Expedition 15. And then we went up together, Shannon Walker and myself, and, uh, and Fyodor was our commander of the Soyuz when we went up last year. So we're coming home. And we actually, inside of the Soyuz, the, the commander sits in the center seat, and the hatch opens in, in, into his seat. So, uh, so you're, if you're in the right seat, like where I was, you're kind of up on the side, and there's not an, if the hatch is open and the commander is there or not there, there's no way that you can get out. You have to actually close the hatch, and the commander has to be gone out of his seat for me to actually physically get out of the capsule. So, so when we were getting ready to undock from the space station, Shannon strapped in and I strapped in. And Fyodor is up in the uh, habitation module, which is this little round uh, compartment where we actually, there's a little, there's a potty in there, that's where our food is. And, and that's where we live for two days uh, while we're catching up and phasing with the space station before we dock. So we actually live there for a little more than two days. And so Fyodor says, hey Doug, uh, could you hold on to this? And he floats down, you know, down into the capsule. This, and I got about this much space, you know, the, the panel's about, you know, 10 inches from my face. And um, he floats down this big Ziploc bag, like a gallon bag, you know, it's stuffed full of stuff, you know. And I'm like, look at this, I said, what is he? I said, he said, hey, can you hang on, can you hang on to this? And I said, sure. So he floats it down. I'm looking at this bag. He's got his space walking gloves in there, you know, he's got pens and He's got envelopes that are postmarked from the International Space Station. <laughs> All these little parts and pieces. I said, like, he's stealing stuff. I said, what is this stuff? You know, I said, like, well, I'm taking it home for my kids and everything. You know, so I was like, all right. I said, like, and so now I've got this bag that's, you know, it's, I have my visor open still. I've got this bag that's in front of me. It's it's my my little bubble. It's the only it's the only thing volume left in my bubble. And so now it's it's between me and the panel, and. Um, and I thought, man, this thing is going to be incredible when we land. He, and he didn't. He decided not to use any tape. You know, the thing is bulging. You know, he's barely got the thing zipped. And I said, I'm not hanging on to this. So he gets down. He comes in. We strap him in. We close the hatch. We're getting ready to undock. So we undock. And I'm holding on to this bag. I said, Fyodor, uh, you need to take this bag. And he goes, uh, uh, just uh, just hang on to it until we uh, do the orbit burn, you know. Take the next one. This is going to be bad, you know. So we orbit the Earth twice as we're phasing for the landing zone. Then on the third orbit, 
we fire the engines and we start falling towards the earth. And so, and in this thing, you're just falling like a rock. And so now we're starting to pick up drag, and I still got this bag, and I, I said, Peter, I put it over in his lap and said, you're taking this. You know? So he stuffs it down, there's, there's a little bit of a volume between your, your calf and your, and your hamstring, you know. So he jams it down in there, and there's part of it sticking out on my side, part of it sticking out on Shannon's, Shannon's side, you know, and I can see this thing bulging there. And um, God, this is going to be ugly, you know. So, so anyway, we go through the whole rock and roll of coming back uh, through the atmosphere. And then we land, and when we landed, we hit, we bounced, we hit again, and then we rolled over. And um, and when we hit, we bounced up, and I saw like gloves and hands. <laughs> <laughs> that bag broke open as soon, as soon as we hit, and that stuff was all over the place. And then we hit the second time, and then as we were rolling, the stuff was like a, it was like a pinball machine. You know? And um, and so I looked over, we ended up kind of hanging in our belts and kind of facing the ground. And I looked out the window and I could see the grass and everything. I thought, okay, we're down. So I looked over and I checked with, I said, are you guys okay? And I looked over and Shannon had this empty Ziploc bag in her, in her hand. It had one pen left. And she goes, I think this is yours. <laughs> that was one year ago, uh, yesterday, last night. And so, so the memories, you know, they, they kind of emblazoned in your mind. But... Does anybody have any questions about anything about Twitter or, or tweeting from space? I didn't want to tweet for who, who two years ago wouldn't imagine that you'd be sitting in a tent tweeting to your friends. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was one of those, okay? And uh, actually, I was in Russia last year, uh, beginning of May, just getting ready to launch, and Astro Suichi, that was, do you guys follow uh, Suichi? Uh, Suichi was on board the station. And we had just gotten the cupola there. And so now it opened up a whole new world. Actually, a third. Now we could see space and our Earth in, in reference to deep space in three dimension. Because normally uh, the optical windows that we have in the space station are in the deck. So when you look out those windows, you get a face full of Earth. Because we're actually pretty close in low Earth orbit. But now the cupola with these oblique windows, we can actually see the Earth as celestial activity as the Earth, and in, in the Earth backdrop, like with the backdrop of space, and it opened up a whole new realm of our visual uh, uh, interpretation of what it's like to fly in space. And so we actually started, started tweeting those pictures, and so nobody on my crew was, wanted to, or had signed up for Twitter or nothing. So I'm in, I'm in Russia, and they called me, and they said, NASA headquarters said, hey, would you consider... Uh, doing this Twitter thing, and I'm like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so, and, I, and so they said, well, you send out a tweet, and you're limited to 140 characters, and you can send pictures and stuff like that, and, and uh, Soichi's been doing it, and uh, we really need somebody from your crew to do it. I said, you know, I don't think I really want to do that. You know, I, I didn't really know the power, I, I don't really know what I know today. Uh, and, so, and so I said, you know, I don't think I really want to do that, because I, I wanted my experience... I wanted to bring this experience to you guys, to everybody on this planet, to be able to enjoy. And what I didn't understand was the power of this of this social media. That uh, it was a couple weeks later, NASA, NASA called me back again, and they said um, we would like to strongly encourage. <laughs> uh, you know, and I've been in the military my whole life, so when you're strongly encouraged to do something, uh, so I said. I'll do it, you know. So I started sending pictures, and then, and then, of course, the rest is the rest is history. And now, now it's such an important part of my life. What I didn't realize was the the power of the just getting just getting words or a picture out there and just let it go, yeah. because it opens up such creative global thought and dialogue that I didn't really understand. And I and I I actually personally used it. I'm gonna need to wrap up here. I personally used it for. Um, for my journaling as well. So, okay, I talked like I ran out of time. But questions? Well, the good news is you're with us most of the day, right? I'm what? You're with us. Yes, today. I'm with you <laughs> all the day. I'm here, I'm here with you guys all day, so if you have those questions and we don't get to them, uh, please uh, save them up and come grab me and ask that question. I have a totally random question. Um, so when you're in the space station, you actually see stars out the window. At least from video, I, I, you never are able to do so. so I was kind of curious yeah, and, you know, that's when you see these uh, still images that we take outside yeah. and everything, it's difficult to see the stars because the cameras are trained on that near object, whatever you're looking at. And so 
when you're out there, you can actually see the stars. And what's really, really cool is because the stars don't twinkle there, because we're not looking at them through an atmosphere, and so you can, you, with the intensity of the brightness of the stars, you, you get three-dimensional depth. I mean, you can see, of course, you can see, of course, the Earth in its three dimension, and you can see the moon. Now you see the moon in a different light as well. You know, when we look at the moon in the sky, we, our brain doesn't, doesn't uh, really consider it a sphere. You know, we, we look at it, it's like, oh, what a beautiful moon, you know. But then when you see it in three dimensions, it's like, wow, that's like really a, like a little, uh, little monster out there, you know. And, and then you see, you see the moon, and then you see the planets in the ecliptic, and then the stars and the intensity and the different intensity, you get that three dimension. It's amazing. It's really, really amazing to see the stars from space. But on our video and on our still imagery, because of the, the power of the cameras that we're using, it, uh, it kind of washes out that, uh, or blacks out the uh, background. So you don't actually see them very often in, a, in the star field in, in our cameras unless we train on them. So. The one here to your right. Hi there. Um, recently I saw a video, a sort of time lapse video from the space station uh, of the Aurora. Yes. Uh, and, and can you describe, you know, have you seen it? I'm assuming yes. And we just bought it, you know, the first time you saw it. Yes. The Aurora is, uh, I still this, I still dream about the Aurora. Because when you're traveling, when you're orbiting here, if you're traveling so fast that it's difficult to pick up motion on the Earth. So, I mean, you can see the effect of wind, you can see cloud formation, we saw a lot of hurricanes, so you can see spiral clouds, you can see, you can see wave, like wave formation, you can see uh, coastline, um, uh, the currents and things like that, but you can't pick up motion until you see the aurora and, or lightning. And those are the two things that make our planet come it just makes it come alive. I mean, the vibrance of the colors is is like a cartoon. You know, you when you first look at it, you kind of get that mesmerized look. You know, because the colors are so vivid and so beautiful. And then when you see aurora, kind of kind of just mapping out, it looks like paintbrush strokes. You know, and then then you see it, it looks like rain. It's got a three dimension to it. You can see it kind of raining down on the planet. It's just amazing, and so when you see it moving like that, it just takes your breath away. I, I, would, I remember the first time I was just standing there, I had the camera in my hand, I'm like, look at it. Fyodor called me over, and he goes, Fyodor's a professional photographer, so he, he actually gave Shannon and I classes the first several weeks we were there. Um, and so he goes, come over, check this out. So we're looking out the window, and the, the, the planet was just like, it was like this raging ball of life, you know? And it was just amazing to see it. Just looked electric, you know. Just, it was just really, really crazy. And so, uh, so then I, Fyodor taught me how to take photos of the. And and when I take the photos, I, it looks beautiful, but I can't capture the motion, you know. So, so I think those videos now, the, the time lapse yeah. videos that we have, kind of shows that motion. Okay. And that's probably the most breathtaking part of it is, is capturing it. It, make, it really portrays our Earth now as not this cartoonish vibrance of colors, but now it's like this raging ball of life in the middle of this big, empty sea of blackness. You know, it's just amazing. Really crazy. Okay. We'll have to move on. But everybody, please give a big round of applause.